So there was a state convention in Utah at which Mitt Romney got up to speak and he was booed and assailed as a communist. I found a video of it on Twitter. Take a look at this really quickly. So what do you think about President Biden's first 100 days? Now, you know me as a person who, uh, who says what he thinks, and I don't hide the fact that I wasn't a fan of our last president's character issues. And I'm also no fan... Aren't you embarrassed? And I'm also no fan of the president's... Yeah, sure. My friends, this is the moment I was talking about. Please, thank you, show respect. So this was quite amazing for many reasons. <laughs> uh, firstly, they're calling Mitch McConnell, Mitch, did I just say Mitch McConnell? They're calling Mitt Romney, of all people, a communist. And honestly, this right here just, you know, buffers what I say so frequently when I talk about these things. These people don't know what these words mean. They have no idea what communist means, socialist, socialism, communism, anything of the sort, fascism, fascist. They, they don't know what any of these words mean. They just trot them out as insults, you know, however they see fit. It just, it, it, it makes no sense and I don't think it's going to stop, but it is what it is. So Mitt Romney was booed. Now, for those of you that, aren't, that don't know, Mitt Romney is one of Trump's biggest critiquers as it pertains to politicians on the right. You know, he he hates the pre, the former president's uh, character issues, you know. Now, just very quickly, they all agree on policy, okay? All of their policies are shit. They all agree, you know, deregulation, endless war, neo-conservatism, uh, uh, all that stuff. Guns, religion, you know the rest. I don't need to go into detail on that part. But they don't like the fact that Trump is unhinged and, you know, the mean tweets. And as I just, as he stated, actually, the character issues and how he has no filter, basically. And they want the typical Republican to, you know, be back to what it was before, you know, uh, the same policies, but more reserved and more, I guess, family oriented or whatever, however they formerly saw themselves, which isn't what um, they believe themselves to be, which was what Trump was these uh, previous four years, okay, which was unhinged, a bomb thrower, very toxic, and they didn't like that at all. And that's where the dividing lines is. But Donald Trump has this hold um, and still does on the Republican Party where, you know, it's his and whatever he says goes, he's the man. And when his supporters see people criticizing their perceived leader, they don't like that. And you get what happened in that video to Mitt Romney. Now, Trump won Utah by far and away in this past presidential election, the 2020 election against Joe Biden. I think he won with like 58% of the vote or something like that. So Utah is definitely Trump country, okay? At least as it stands now. Now, as you saw, Derek, that was Derek Brown that came up and told the crowd to show respect and he kind of calmed things down, but it didn't stop there. The actual governor of Utah, Spencer Cox, came up to speak and he was kind of booed basically in the same fashion. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with Spencer Cox, he's another critic of Trump. Actually, when Trump first started running for president, Spencer, the uh, Utah governor, was critical of him. Of course, he fell in line once Trump got the nomination, as all the other Republicans did, including Mitt Romney. But he was still critical. And he was also critical of him after the January 6th uh, insurrection, you know, attack on the Capitol. He actually said out of his own mouth that it would probably be in everyone's best interest if Trump resigned. Now, he probably backtracked on those statements, but that's neither here nor there. And he's also catching heat for a lot of his COVID-19 restrictions. He's actually a Republican that's actually imposed a bit more uh, restrictions and mask mandates and what have you um, in his respective state. And of course, they don't like that because something, something, freedom, whatever. So he caught some hell. And then after him, everybody's favorite, Mike Lee, you know, came to the podium and he was met with happiness and applause because, you know, he's 
a big Trump cuck. He's a part of the cult as well, and he's a huge Trump supporter. So they're going to love him because he's, you know, not in opposition to their guy. So what does this mean? OK, what, what, what does them assailing Mitt Romney as a communist, booing him and booing their own governor? What does this mean? I mean these are people that have been thoroughly propagandized. OK. And, you know, once you're told a certain thing over and over and over again, and it gets beaten into your brain, you start to believe it as if it's reality. But it's not reality. OK, these people, they it's this revanchist kind of movement that the right wing politicians have. Um, has they have, they've been pushing this relentlessly that the country is somehow being overtaken by minorities and socialism and when they say socialism they basically mean like big government programs like expanding Medicare you know maybe like a UBI you know uh, making higher education free or cheaper you know things like that okay uh, making marijuana legal stuff like that they don't like the big government programs because it helps people and they're insanely corrupt, their best interest is for their donors. And so they want to help their donors and screw the people over. But they always throw red meat to their base, you know, the religion aspect, the guns, the freedom of speech, you know, to keep their base supporting them. And so the question then becomes, well, how does the left defeat that? Well, you defeat it by leaning into economic policies. You see, the corporate Democrats, the establishment Democrats, they're on this tirade. It's a tirade of leaning into the identity politics and, you know, women's rights and, you know, Black Lives Matter and a bunch of those things. And while those things matter, those are truly divisive issues. And it hurts to hear. I, I know, you know, I don't like to hear it, but it, it is. And so, how you win, how you defeat these movements that are so uh, prominent now on the right is you lean into economic policy and you give people things that are material, that they can actually feel and receive and use. And when they see that you're helping them and that you're for them, then you can actually grab some of those people that may have been those cultish right wing support. Now, you're not going to get all of them. But I do believe you can get a clean maybe 10 to 15 percent of those people that might be a little generous, but I think it can happen. Every election doesn't have to be 50 50 or 55 uh, uh, 35. I'm not that good at math. OK, it doesn't have to be like that all the time. Uh, I mean, if we look at, you know, back in the FDR era, he won four times and he won overwhelmingly. I think there was one time where he only lost like uh uh, like two or three states. I mean, even if you look at Ronald Reagan, a Republican president, you know, the message stuck and he won overwhelmingly when he won his presidential election. So these things can happen, but the Democrats, the left, they have to be smart in how they do it and they have to execute the correct strategies and know what ideas to push. Things like Medicare for all should be at the forefront of everyone's um, kind of basket of pieces of legislation that they would like to get implemented here in this country because those are universal issues, universal programs, and those are issues that would unite the people because they would help the majority of everyone. Okay, Occupy Wall Street, it was the 1% versus the 99%. Those types of movements are the kind of movements that will crush things like what you just witnessed in this video. With that being said, this is nothing new. Um, it was quite hilarious though to see them call Mitt Romney, of all people, a uh, communist, he doesn't even believe in raising the minimum wage to a living wage. I believe his idea of raising the minimum wage is like to $11 and tie it to inflation so that it can never be raised again because it's tied to inflation. So it'll increase every year, but it'll never be a living wage. That guy's a communist. Give me a break.